I don't like this any more than you do, Donnie. But you get what we're doing, right? We're about to board some sort of time locomotive that your son has sent back from the future so that we can travel back through the past four years of your presidency to somehow muss up your malarkey even further beyond all conscionable recognition in an effort to sway our current election in my favor. Right, so why exactly are we doing this? I, I mean, I know, but I, I'm curious if you know. Because as your future son said, fate of the world, or as I like to say, soul of America, rest on my winning. Now, he didn't go into any specifics about the hellscape that I can only imagine he inherited from four more years of your incompetence and lack of compassion. But I could see it in his eyes. That's all he needed to say. I looked in there and there was nothing. Nothing left. No glimmer, amber, spark of humanity left in the boy. Or... I don't think you would have got very much of that regardless. The kid's creepy as fuck. I gotta build this thing back better, man. If for no one else, then for your son's sake, Donnie. Now, you couldn't see it before, but I know that's why you're doing it now. You couldn't see outside of yourself and your own selfish actions, but you've seen it now through his eyes. The consequence of those selfish actions on his future. Now, my friend Barack, my best friend Barack, he always said you can never put hope out to pasture. Now, I'd like to think that after all this, there's hope left even for you, Donnie. Now, come on, that was empathy you were feeling, man. What? Okay, what are you... No, come on. Fucking Baron! Fine, okay. We'll do it. Plus, shoot you straight. I'd try anything at this point. You know, I have been swinging at this pitch since 87, and my GM, the Catholic Lord God Almighty, has looked down and he has said, Joe, it is time to hit or get off the pot. What? I'm an old man, Don. I know I don't look it, but I'm starting to feel it, you know? Like... Brill cream scraped over too much head. You know, let's just call a spade a gay pride parade and move on. I'm on my way out. New generation skateboarding in. Plus, <laughs> amount of secondhand Amtrak smoke I've inhaled over the years, it's a wonder I still piss standing. No, you're old. Yep, that is exactly what I just said. Old and sleepy. And speaking of sleepy, I, uh... I think I had some pills here that Don Jr. Ah, Don Jr. had left behind. He's got that uh, attention deficit ADD thing that Barack Obama gave him. You should probably take some. I mean, I don't need some, but you should probably have some. If I needed that, I'd disclose that I needed that. But hey, if you need someone to take one with you, yeah, I'll take one if you need hand holding. All right, let's go ahead and get in this time travel portal thing. I want to be done before my night nights with Hannity. Oh. What? How the hell are you supposed to work this thing? If I can figure out how to talk radio from my basement and you can, you know, enact foreign policy from the toilet, then certainly we can figure out how to work a time machine. Well, this must be a new machine. It wants us to uh, set a password. I got it. Make it person, woman, man, camera, TV. What? Come on, man. That That's a terrible password. You just don't like it because you're not cognitively with it like me. It's a perfect password. Nobody could remember the password except for me. I can remember the password. I don't like it because I don't want to have to put that in every time. It's just supposed to be something short, simple that you can remember. And I think you got to work a, a, a number or a symbol in there, too. Let's just use mine. It's 310 to Yuma. I'm the president. I'm all powerful. It's my future son's mailbox time machine, okay? So I'm going to set the password, and then we're going to use that password. Fine. All right, well, I guess now we need a, a date. Where should we go first? Well, I guess we should go to that boring first day thingy. You mean your inauguration? 
Ugh, that thing was so boring. They made me sit next to my family for like four Fox and Friends. And then when I finally did get to talk, I just had to read stuff that somebody else had written. They didn't even let me cuff it. January 20th, 2017. Here we go. Jeez Louise. Hey, oh, see, I have to, I have to take this. Allie? Oh, hey, sweetie. Hey, listen. Hey, before you get going now, uh, now may not be the best time. Yeah? No? Okay, hold, all right. Now, hold on, I'm gonna get a pen and write, sorry, D fun? D how, how fun were they to begin with, sweetie? Oh, fun, got you. No, 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 I hear it now. Sorry, the D got lost somewhere in the tinnitus. I guess we're here. Uh, you don't need to wear that. We're in the past. There's no COVID yet. Trust me. Pansy. Oh. Little thin out here. We must be towards the back side of the crowd. Call that spitting distance. Now, what exactly are we doing here, Donnie? And tell me you thought this thing through more than your COVID response. I've done the best job time traveling of any president in history, but this is a brand new thing. You know, Obama left us with bad time travel. I fixed it. I gave us good time travel. So now we're time traveling and I'm doing a really good job. But no, I did not think this through. All right, all right. And if you're gonna make things worse, then we're gonna have to, what, find you and, and then swap you for you. That sounds right. Exactly what I would have said. Let's get me to me, and then you bag me like a protester, or an undocumented, and then I'll swap like a wife. And I have an idea. Uh, you can use the chicken bucket from back in the time machine to subdue me. It's still full of chicken skin, so it'll be nice and intoxicating. Uh, and if the current day me starts to wake up, just slap me on the ass with this copy of Trump magazine. It puts daddy right to sleep. What exactly are you going to do here, Donnie? Man, I was at this thing, and, I, and I'm racking my brain trying to figure out how you could possibly make this any worse. Oh, I've got an idea. Uh, remember that American carnage line that all the news organizations were talking about? Well, this time when I say it, I'm going to throw in this little aside that I had at rehearsal. It was so funny, it had Bannon juicing his dockers. <laughs> boy, boy, do I want to know. Just, what the hell was that? I said... This American carnage has to end right here, right now. And then I put my hand up over my mouth like I was telling a pretend secret, and I said, and we can start by getting the black guy out of here, am I right, America? <laughs> and then I threw up this cool high five that Stephen Miller taught me. You see that, Joe? I did it right. I held up my hand for a high five, and they all held their hands right back. That's not what they were doing, Don. Sure they were. We just couldn't connect because I had walked up a very steep ramp, and I was high up on the stage, and they were all way low below me. So, uh, did I give you a little trouble getting back here? You know, a lot of people have said I'm like the Jean-Claude Van Damme of presidents, you know? Some people even say that I would run into an active shooter situation and take everybody down, even the victims, with my bare hands. No, I had absolutely no problem taking your sorry, squishy ass down, and I'd do 25 push-ups right here, right now, for the hell of it, if this mailbox time machine had the whip. Well, then what took you so long getting back? I've been waiting for your sorry ass for, like, a whole Tucker Carlson. Sorry. On my way back, I saw a woman. She had a shirt on that said, World's Greatest Grandma. I believed her, and I wanted to know why. Well, where to now? Well, you know, now we've got a system, so we can pretty much go wherever we want in time because I've done so much bad shit as president. We are in full agreement there, Donnie. Let's hit it, Joseph R. Esquire. All right, what's the deal? Here's the deal. I'm typing in the password. Ah, uh, you don't remember it, do you? It's person, woman, man. I remember it. It just takes four goddamn city stops to type the whole thing in. Here we go.
And China, if you're listening, please send over a copy of Hillary Clinton's emails. And Zimbabwe, if you're listening, please send over a picture of Chuck Schumer's balls. Fellow Republicans, it's so important that you vote in this midterm. There is a terrible caravan coming up from Mexico, and they're sending their rapists, they're sending their murderers, they're sending MSG-13, they're sending MI4 mission protocol, MI5 ghost nation. And Wakanda, if you're listening, please send over evidence of Obama hoarding all that vibranium. To all the American people out there, I want to show you my taxes. Kim Jong-un, I know you poop, I know you pee. As you can see here, I've just signed this very beautiful travel ban, thanks uh, in part to the help of all these fantastic white people sitting around me. I would love to show you my taxes, but they are currently under audit, and unfortunately, the IRS cabinet is very, very big, and my files are all very, very small, and it's hard to see what's going on, but trust me, I make a lot of money. Now, according to this very legally binding document, uh, the following spaces are off limits. Uh, you can see shithole Africa over here, Haiti, because I hate eat. Uh, Saudi Arabia and Turkey are okay, thanks in part to their delicious lunch meat, but also, most importantly, the presence of my hotel. So, a lot of people say I have beautiful hotels there. And they're all gonna be gay. And the liberal cities, the sanctuary cities, I like to call them the spank you Gary cities. This space here, this is go. If Obama passes it, he goes to jail. To be honest, everybody liked your dad better. They're sending people who don't tip. They're sending people who smelt it and then claim that they didn't dealt it. They're sending television commercials that are louder than TV shows. It's a mess. God damn it, Joe. I've been in here waiting for you for like two Piros. I saw a car full of young men at a Taco Bell drive up and the young man placing the order who was struggling to get his words out and all, all his friends in the car were howling with laughter at him. And I went over there, wanted to give him some pathology tips and I got in the car, but it turns out that his stutter, their laughter, their hunger for that matter were, were products of a different affliction. Still not sure where I stand on all that, but I gotta tell you, the more I was in the car, the more I was starting to enjoy it. Here, take another brain sharpener, and chase it with a stool softener, and get yourself together, man. We've got one more stop to make. I'm a goddamn genius. You know, Joe, I got to thinking, we've only been going back in time to the stuff that I've done as president. But what about all the shady stuff I did before I was president? Like the birtherism thing? No, even before that. We gotta go back to the Bush years. The Billy Bush years. I want to be very clear, Billy. This is not locker room talk. I've literally never been in a locker room. Well, a men's locker room. But when you go to a women's locker room, they let you do anything. You can grab them by the pussy. You can sniff them by the boobies. You can honk them by the butthole. You can... Surely that worked. <laughs> Please hear what I say through my privilege. The future is female, Dad. My wife, AOC bot, knows what's best. She's closing this channel now. Goodbye. Oh my God. We, we lost, lost Baron. Baron.